That is, um, at a certain moment in your lecture, you say, or you argue that Europe is now the scenario of this unsettling spectacle, the re-emerge of extremist, nationalistic, xenophobic and racist right, which do not believe in democratic principles. Would it not be more democratic to say, look, if this is what the people want, we have to accept it because this is what the majority of the people want. Well, we, we defend ourselves, believing, for example, that all, all uh, totalitarian regimes were unpopular. That the majority of uh, societies which uh, fall in the hands of uh, extremist and fanatical governments were against those governments, uh, resisting you know, uh, the fanaticism of the minority which took power. This is a lie. This is not true. Hitler was very popular. He won the election with just a third of the electorate, but very few years after, he was enormously popular. He had the majority of the population with him. Mussolini was not popular. Mussolini was extremely popular. The worst dictators that we have had in Latin America, real monsters like Trujillo in the Dominican Republic, he was enormously popular, enormously popular. Uh, in uh, my country, to my shame, Fujimori, when he became a dictator, he was very popular. He was very popular, and people who were against Fujimori were insulted in the streets of Lima, as myself. So this is the truth. The truth is that uh, a society is uh, not always, not eternally democratic. It can become democratic, but it can move towards the extremes given certain circumstances. I can definitely add to uh, what we have just heard from Mario. Uh, my own experience, I come from Israel, 62 years old, always a democracy ever since it was founded. It has remained a democracy, which is quite an achievement for its generation, but always a democracy under siege from outside and from within. And if there is any lesson we can draw from our everyday struggle about democracy in Israel, it is that majoritarian rule is only one gist of democracy. And anyone who thinks that democracy is about majority is making a tragic mistake. The other great pillar of democracy is always inalienable, egalitarian, civil, and human rights. If you leave that out, you have forgotten what democracy is about, whether it is in Israel or in European countries. I, I would second that very strongly. The, the idea of majority rule, which is of the e essence of democracy, um, has to be accom accompanied, and I believe institutionally accompanied, structurally accompanied, by uh, protections of certain rights. Majority rule has to come, for example, with minority rights at the same time. One of the great dangers, however, it seems to me, is that the idea of democracy, which is the idea of self-government by the citizens of a country as the final authority of legitimacy, um, sh should not be stolen. And stolen particularly by forces that use democratic terms for anti-democratic purposes. And it's the sort of thing I think um, one needs to worry about. Is Italy still a democracy? No. No? No. Uh, now, I think uh, Italy is not a real uh, democracy. Um, there are uh, a struggle for democracy with, um, uh, with uh, uh, large uh, sections of uh, the population that are for a democracy. But now, from an institutional point of view, we can't consider, in, in the classic terms, Italy still a democracy. Uh, democracy is uh, really and deeply jeopardized uh, in Italy because uh, when you have a system of media that has 
only a parallel in Europe, that is uh, Putin's Russia, this uh, already is not uh, a democracy. Uh, we have still um, uh, uh, judges that are um, autonomous from the political power, but for that, they are more and more intimidated. They have to be almost uh, the heroes. And uh, a democracy needs not to have heroes, but normal uh, citizens. And um, when corruption uh, becomes uh, not only incredibly enlarged, but a sort of proud, because uh, Berlusconi uh, didn't, uh, don't, doesn't uh, uh, negate that uh, the, the corruption of his friends, and uh, he um, he explained uh, uh, that uh, one has to be proud not to pay taxes, for instance. Uh, this is not a normal. Uh, right uh, uh, party. This is uh, something that changed, uh, changed completely uh, the mood of politics. And um, I, I think there is a certain risk of confusion with these questions. Huh? Is Italy still a democracy? Is United States a democracy? Uh, I think you can put these kind of questions only if you don't know what a dictatorship is. Uh, I, as a Peruvian Latin America, I'm an expert on, on dictatorships. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, and I love, really, when, when I hear these questions applied to countries which are deeply democratic. Very imperfect democracies, of course, Italy, very imperfect. I have no sympathy for Berlusconi. I think it's very sad that a country with the cultural tradition of Italy has a clown, you know, as a very corrupt clown uh, uh, as president of his government. But Italy is still a democracy because you can't criticize Berlusconi. All the spaces in which there is freedom are used by oppositors to, to Berlusconi and to criticize fiercely his traffics and uh, his grotesque spectacles and the Bellinas and uh, uh, you still can change the government through elections. You still can change. There is the, the possibility of an alternance in, in power because the structures of, basic structures of democracy, democracy are there. Uh, it is true that the, the electorate because I think the, with the frustration of the leftist governments of Italy, we were so uh, inept, uh, opened their arms to Berlusconi, uh, very sad. But you cannot say and you cannot compare, in spite of the corruption, in spite of the magogery of Italy with a real dictatorship. This is really an astronomical different kind of thing. And United States. I didn't confound anything because I answered the question, is Italy still a democracy? And I, my answer is, yeah, is no. But I never uh, said that in Italy there is a dictatorship. I started my uh, essay with the words, uh, Berlusconi's Italy is not fascism. But uh, between fascism, with all the violence, the street violence, and so on, and democracy, even a non-perfect democracy, like in France, like in Spain, like in Germany, like in Netherlands, um, there is a space for a, a third possibility. A non-democracy, of course, I can write every day uh, on a newspaper, but since only 10% of Italian people read the newspapers, including sport newspaper, uh, that means that 90% is informed 
only by TV. And when on TV you have a sort of Bulgarian property of Berlusconi on media, this changed completely the, the idea of uh, liberal democracy that, uh, for instance, uh, ha Jefferson had. Or, uh, and so you can't, uh, you can't realistically speak um, uh, of Italy uh, as a democracy in the normal European sense. And so isn't it, that, that, isn't it time that you should realize democracy does not exist? must be something really wrong with the liberal left in Europe and elsewhere if we are using such words as democracy or fascism in order to trump our own hopes for our own future. Saying that democracy doesn't exist anymore, it has been said around the table about certain countries, it has been said often in my country. Saying that and leaving it as that is a measure of desperation is a measure of impoverishment, moral and intellectual. And if this is the liberal left, then I would like to, be, to belong to a more vocal part of it, a more hopeful part of it, a part that has future horizons. So it's not useful, I think. It's simply not useful, let alone a question of academic analysis. What do we call democracy? What is a democracy? It's simply totally unuseful and damaging to say, help my country. Democracy is gone. They've taken my country away. What shall I do? Usually the answer is, let me become a cynic and enjoy life while I can. And so many young Europeans are saying now, and even parts of Tel Aviv are beginning to say now. This is a totally wrong attitude. Not only do I agree with Mario that you have to see a real adamant non-democracy in order to appreciate what you really do still have, but you have to become much more active and proactive about fighting for what you have. Very few people here have mentioned social democracy. So let me just say that, let, let, let me remind you that with all its shortcomings, and I come from a kibbutz, I know what utopian um, uh, socialism is and what are its limits, but social democracy historically has been the best trump against xenophobia. But because the Ifania, it the Ifania, social democracy, I mean, with all respect, uh, and I know it quite well, but both here in the Netherlands and in France and in Italy and in England... Doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Res Let me just answer very briefly, and this will be conclude also my response. Rob, as a person who has used ghosts, reawakening is such a wonderful metaphor, never say about anything that it is dead, least of all social democracy. That's really hopeful. One brief.